Jean-Michel Jarre, very warm welcome to you on Hard Talk. When you were in Moscow, September the 7th, three and a half million people got you into the record books once again. Weren't you nervous about a crowd this size? Yes, you, you, you're always nervous about any kind of audience. Then, then we have, when you have an audience of that scale, it's obviously so, so different and uh, very, I was very, yeah, it's very impressive and... Uh, but also, you, I start, and I start not to thinking too much about it. I mean, what's nice about uh, an outdoor concert such as this one is the fact that uh, people are creating their own theatre themselves. I mean, it's not like if you are trying to put all uh, these people, a crowd, into a theatre, into four walls. Actually, they are creating their area more or less by themselves. So, there so is it's not just you giving to them, but they give to you. Instead. That's right, exactly. And there is a kind of convivial uh, attitude, a kind of uh, sharing concept, sharing, uh, sharing atmosphere, and sharing, yeah, in, in a sense, uh, it's, it's, an, it's a one-off. So it's something that's not going to be reproduced. Everybody knows that uh, you have no second chance for the audience as well as for the artist. And in these days where everything is available through TV screens, through satellites, through videos, through computers, through internet, I mean, uh, to go back to the very simple thing of being gathered just to share one unique moment, like when you are in front of an eclipse, for instance, you, do, you, you know that it's not going to happen a second time. And it's well, let's just take a look at some of the pictures from Moscow, because they were extraordinary sites. People said they hadn't actually seen anything like it since the Stalin funeral. Do you ever think... It's a more, uh, less dramatic. <laughs> do you ever think that, why me? Why am I able to actually get so many people out onto the streets, get so many people out to the concerts? I don't, obviously that is an answer I don't have, but uh, I would say that uh, it's so obviously not only me. I would be crazy to think it's because of uh, me. I'd, I'm not at that stage yet. I think it's the scale of the project. It's the project itself. What is wider, the, the scale is wider, the, or the project is wider than, uh, than just the uh, uh, just performance and the... And, and, being. It's a wider picture involving the architecture, the environment, uh, the cultural environment, the, the, the giant projections that transformed or hijack a district or a, a building such as the this uni fantastic university building of the, of the city of Moscow. The wedding cake kind of thing. Yeah, it's like uh, Gotham City or, or Metropolis. It has that kind of dramatic... Is it emotional for you, these concerts? Do you get emotional? Yes, because you know this this uh, uh, this project uh, was really a kind of civic event. I've been commissioned by the city of, of Moscow to do a, an outdoor concert to celebrate uh, the 850th anniversary of the city. And what I tried to put in this uh, project, on a musical point of view, it was based on oxygen, but with special uh, arrangement. And on a graphic and visual point of point of view, I really wanted to convey the kind of uh, uh, elements and ingredients that have been so strong in the Russian culture. So Actually, you reflect that in the visuals? That absolutely, with and your I music transform it, I use your own song in the, Lumiere, isn't it? Your yes, own, I mean, in a sense, more than that, show, it was really like, a, really like a kind of multimedia uh, uh, project involving video, involving graphics, and what was interesting, I think, was to try to uh, uh, show to the Russian people these days that uh, we stole so much uh, the Americans, the Europeans, to the Russian uh, culture during the 20th century. Even during a period they didn't realize what, it, what, what was happening. All their fantasies about the West are, have been sometimes generated by themselves. I mean, when you are taking the advertising business, the rock culture, the, all the graphic uh, work from the 60s or the 50s or the 70s in America, in England, in, in France, they have been really very influenced by, by con constructivist artists, and, and Russian uh, graphic artists. Well, and I really wanted to, to, to play with this and showing that uh, we, uh, it's, it would be a, a, a good time to pay them a bit of a tribute. But you also wanted to play, if I can use that term, with space as well. You had this live link up with the Mir space station. What was that about? Does space attract you, the possibilities of space? I don't know. It's, it's, it's strange that in uh, how in my life I've been linked with space without uh, asking in a sense, in Houston, I've been involved with this uh, project with the 25th anniversary of NASA and having uh, the uh, 
the, the astronauts having a lot of contact with astronauts. It was linked to the tragedy of uh, Challenger at that time <coughs> in '86. And in Russia, uh, Mir Station is a, is, a, is a symbol of Russian technology, but also of a kind of retro future retro future type of technology, a kind of uh, future belonging to the image of the future belonging to the 50s, like sci-fi would be retro, like 2001 being behind us. I mean, it's, uh, Mir carry, is carrying all this. So, I mean... Uh, it's carrying it in a pretty day. Tell me about China, because when you went to China in the 80s, you were the first Western artist to perform there. It, they must have regarded you as some kind of subversive, didn't they? Didn't, yes, they let you in with a lot of reluctance. Yes, it, uh, it took me quite a long time. It took me around two years to, to, to do this uh, project. It's, it was strange because, first of all, I've been asked by the Chinese government, and suddenly they, they realized that uh, it could be maybe a, bit, maybe a bit dangerous at that time, too soon to, to, uh, uh, to present to the, to introduce to the Chinese audience a kind of modern type of project with uh, involving. Uh, Graphics and, and modern music, and uh, I mean, I, did I you just have a conscience again. about this? Because it's a country with a, a, a pretty dubious human rights record. Did you not feel that you perhaps know, you shouldn't bestow you know, uh, your patronage? Was, you, you have to understand that it was exactly in a in a period of uh, of, uh, of the century where uh, China opened like a yes, like a. Uh, in a sense, it opened the door slightly, uh, just for five years. It was just after the, 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 the fall of the Gang of Four and before 89. It was in 81 and 81. And uh, then they wanted to, to open a little more doors to foreign artists. And at that time, you had uh, uh, a kind of uh, tentative of being a bit more democratic. And what were the audiences changed. like? The audience was uh, uh, a strange mixture of the first, the first night we had a lot of officials and military people. So the second night we, we decided to, to buy the tickets because the tickets were, were nothing. Maybe it was maybe $100 for the old, the old place uh, to buy everything. And we distributed, we distributed the, the tickets. You went out into the streets? Yeah, yourself. with people. And, and, and then the second night you had a lot of kids, the real, the real China. And then the five... Uh, Originally, I was supposed to do one concert in uh, Beijing, one in Shanghai, and it, uh, it ended with two in Beijing, three in Beijing, and two in Shanghai. And it has been really, I mean, Shanghai was, is really like the Napoli of, of Orient. They are very, uh, very Latin in the way they, they, they act and they behave. I mean, do, I remember Chinese people, uh, I mean, re literally throwing other, other Chinese guys <laughs> like, uh, like puppets, I mean, to show their enthusiasm. I mean, it was, it was like playing on a different planet, really. Jean-Michel Jean, what's the formula for your music? Because it's, it's, it's clearly music for the masses. You've sold tens of millions of discs, records uh, around the world. What is the formula for you in your music? If I, if I, I would answer you that a lot, of, uh, a lot of artists could answer if we only uh, could know what the formula is. Uh, I think it's uh, based on the idea that uh, I wanted to develop a music that could be not linked with the lyrics necessarily. Uh, uh, thinking that uh, when you are uh, doing a song with lyrics, you are telling a story to somebody, you are into a narrative process. When you are uh, doing music without lyrics, you let the audience uh, create their own uh, images, their own story, their own feelings. You talked about the painters Cezanne and Renoir, and you said they used to paint the same painting. You talked about Fellini always wanting to try to do the same film. Does Jean-Michel Jarre always want to play the same kind of music? You always try to do the same thing. I, I think that an, an artist has um, probably one proposal to do in his lifetime, and it's by trying to improve this proposal, even exploring uh, various ways, obviously. But uh, by the end of the day, you, or by the end of your life, you, you realize that uh, actually like a craftsman who is trying to, to, to create the same table all his life with, with the idea that one day we'll get one right. It's this hope, I think, that uh, makes you uh, and makes me doing music continue. But how have you developed over the last 20 years? How do you think you've changed as a musician over the last 20 years? I think that, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, your, your life that change, uh, obviously, who changes you. It's not so much technology. I think what uh, uh, Chinese musician, musician 
uh, wanted to express 5,000 years ago, or a classical a classic musician two centuries ago, or a pop musician in the 60s, or myself, or some other people today, or musicians in two centuries from now, have been our or the same uh, uh, kind of inspiration in, term, in terms of emotions. I mean, the relation between life and death, the notion of solitude, passion, hate, love, uh, they are timeless. It, they are just the instruments we are using. Uh, that are di different, and uh, I'm using the instruments of my time. I think that people like Scriabin or Tchaikovsky or, or Vivaldi would maybe have used the instruments I'm using today. If they... So, Michel, are, are you a sensitive man? Do you, do you mind what the critics say about you? Sometimes people have, have, have talked about yuppie elevated music. I mean, do, you, do you get hurt by, by things like that? Yes and no. You mean, as long as uh, I heard in an elevator Malheur, Malheur, Miles Davis or the Beatles, and I'm amongst them, uh, it's fine. So, I mean, even your mother-in-law said you were, you were too gimmicky. You were a sweet boy, but you were too gimmicky, she said, at some point. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, that I don't know. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's linked with uh, sometimes with a lot of... Um, of uh, preconceived ideas you have with technology. As soon as you are starting to, to work with, uh, with electronic instruments, people make, are making this confusion that instru electronic instruments like, are like machines and ma machines are not able to, to uh, uh, are not compatible with sensitivity, sensitivity. And we all know that uh, it's the instrument, uh, the, it's the musicians behind the instrument who is able to provide, uh, to provide sensitivity. But I'm not uh, trying to, uh, convince anybody about uh, what they should feel about what I'm... But their choice. In any case, do you say, well, what do I need the critics for? I have 55 million records out there. Yeah, it's, no, it's it not that. It's me? not that. I mean, it's always, uh, I mean, it's always better to feel <laughs> that uh, uh, people are understanding what you're doing or feeling what you, or or feeling what you try to, to express. But you it would be mad to think that uh, everybody will instantly fall in love in, 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 in your work and we are, fortunately we are not in those kind of ancient uh, communist period for example like in China where you have seven pieces and no choice and people had to uh, uh, learn all these pieces by heart before going out to somebody else that was the, one of the crazy idea of uh, Mao's wife in charge of the culture at that time they said okay all the Chinese people should now listen seven pieces of music, whatever they like uh, them or not. Fortunately, we have a lot of choice these days, and I think I'm amongst all other artists to be listened to or not. You can always switch off. A lot of people who've achieved the kind of success that you have in the artistic world have taken to drugs, um, sex, all the... What kept you on the rails? You, were, you, you never got sidetracked, did you? What, what kept you away from all the excesses? I mean, uh, it could be, it could be uh, anything. I mean, uh, I, I would say that uh, it's first of all uh, in your genes. I think the way you are, the way you look, is not only what you do, but also who you are. And um, my my mom, for instance, is uh, is uh, quite extraordinary. She's uh, she's 82 and she's uh, she looks 60. You know? She's incredible. And she she always said, like Churchill, no sport. She said uh, she never did any kind of jogging or anything. So, you know, I'm just commenting this as an example of something that can keep you in shape. You're, you have you to find your own way. I mean, Has sometimes she been a powerful influence on you in your life, your mother? Oh, yes. I think uh, like, uh, like everyone else, good or bad sometimes. I think for, in my case, it has been rather positive because she's quite uh, an extraordinary woman. She's been... Uh, uh, into French resistance, she has uh, uh, made a lot of things in her life, and she has that kind of, in a sense, French obstination, whereas uh, Gallic obstination. But I, uh, I mean, getting uh, more, getting older, I, I realize that uh, it's uh, 